I'm living my dream. Yeah, I think it's the problem solving aspect. I was not an uh, amateur astronomer growing up. I didn't really have an interest necessarily in astronomy. I never owned a telescope. Actually, one of the first memories I have, it was about two or three. Uh, I was sitting on the shoulders of my uncle, and we were staring at a lunar eclipse. I've always been interested in science, and it's just one thing led to another. And in the end, I decided um, that I would most enjoy studying in astronomy. There was a large crowd that gathered, um, and everyone was just staring at, at the moon. And I knew from that point in that I wanted to be an astronomer, you know, at the age that most kids don't even know what an astronomer is. That's, that's what I wanted to be. I've always been interested in how things work and understanding the world around me, so physics, I guess, was a natural extension of that. And I also like the objectivity of it and the ability to apply mathematics to the world around me. I did my undergraduate education in physics and then had a bit of a crisis halfway through. Um, astronomy, I don't see as a switch from physics. I just see it as a sub-branch of physics. And I mean, what is more interesting than studying what exists in the universe and the world around you, so. I took the advice of, I guess, every guidance counselor who has ever said that you should or seek to, as a career, to do the things that you truly love or truly interest and intrigue you each and every day. And I thought back to my youth, and one of the things that interested me was space. And I knew from that point on that what I wanted to do was study this, to, to be able to understand this, what I was staring at. And it's been my dream ever since. This, that inspiration has stuck with me throughout junior school, throughout middle school, high school. I wrote a small report on extrasolar planets and specifically hot Jupiters in my grade nine science class, but that was about the last time I thought of the subject to many years later or actually entering my first undergra undergraduate opportunities of research in astronomy and now my graduate work, which is exactly on this same topic, hot Jupiters, so more than 10 years later. Well, to be honest, I'm not sure what I imagined coming in. It's probably very different uh, from the preconceptions that I had about astronomy. So clearly I'm not uh, looking at the moon on a nightly basis, and I'm not actually even staring up at the sky on a nightly basis. I spent a lot of time observing in Chile at Las Campanas Observatory about 60 nights over the past year. Um, and so I've gotten most of my thesis data there. I've had the pleasure to go observing in, on the big island of Hawaii, for instance, or the Canary Islands, so both tropical vacation destinations that also happen to have telescopes on them. Uh, so I'm using a number of space-based telescopes. Clearly, I can't go there as much, as much fun as the trip would be. Less and less often, astronomers actually have to go to the telescope, but they use a mode of observing called Q-mode observing, in which case you instruct the employees of the telescopes how exactly you want your data to be taken. You enter this information in and your observations are taken for you and sent back to you. And there's the interpretation of the data too. In the end, we really want to understand by interpreting uh, the light signals that are coming from the sky what's happening uh, with a real physical system out there in space. You end up being able to play detective. You end up starting to try to piece together the stories of the universe, of these objects and these systems that are thousands, if not millions, of light years away, based on just a few particles of light, a few photons that we get to receive from them after waiting for you know, hours on end. Once I've received that data, I analyze it, I try to figure out what it is actually telling me about these planets. Raveling the mysteries of the universe, but a lot of it actually takes place in front of a computer screen, even when you're observing at a telescope. So the majority of my time I spend in front of a computer analyzing the data that I receive from telescopes. It's fine with me. I still find it absolutely interesting. and It's really about problem solving. And I get to um, apply many different uh, skills towards problem solving, computer programming, um, pen and paper estimates. We get to try to figure out and, and be storytellers of the universe, you know, piece together some of the most interesting and exotic stories that we have 
right from the beginning of the universe till now, talking about anything from you know planets outside of our own to how our own galaxy works to how galaxies form together in groups to how our universe started. And then I go ahead and write the resulting scientific publications that shares my work with other astronomers. One of the things that I think is, is very important for any scientist, but in particular for astronomers, is that we have the opportunity and we've been given the chance to uncover some of the greatest stories of the universe. This is, this is our job on a daily basis. We get to walk into our offices and try to unpiece or unravel a mystery the, of the universe. It's, in that respect, it's our responsibility to share this. It's our responsibility to let people know about what we're doing and what these mysteries that we're uncovering. Because, um, in many cases, possibly because it's going, going to be useful down the line, but most importantly, because it's in incredibly inspiring. Of course, it's amazing when you're sitting at the telescope and you have data coming in and you look at it and you say, wow, you know, I'm looking at something that nobody's ever seen before and we don't quite know what's happening, but but look at this brown dwarf, it's, you know, it's the light it's emitting is, is getting brighter and dimmer, brighter and dimmer, and, and you know, we want to try to explain what's going on. I feel it's like it's my responsibility to be able to share this with everyone around me. At the end of the day, um, it's their support. It's through, you know, in, here in Canada, it's often through government grants that we have the ability to do the science that we do. And so the, the report that I wrote in grade nine, I wrote about a number of the astronomers doing researching those topics that many years ago and these are the same astronomers, some of the same astronomers that I now work with and that who read my work on the field or on hot Jupiters to learn about the subject. So it's been quite, uh, quite a journey.